Part 1, 1900 to 1933. I am ready, I feel free, to cleave the ether on a novel flight to novel spheres of pure activity. Goethe, Faust, Part 1. Chapter 1. The Golden Age. Strauss, Mahler, and the Fin de Siècle. When Richard Strauss conducted his opera, Zalome, on May 16, 1906, in the Austrian city of Graz, several crowned heads of European music gathered to witness the event. The premiere of Zalome had taken place in Dresden five months earlier, and word had got out that Strauss had created something beyond the pale, an ultra-dissonant biblical spectacle based on a play by a British degenerate whose name was not mentioned in polite company, a work so frightful in its depiction of adolescent lust that imperial censors had banned it from the court opera in Vienna. Giacomo Puccini, the creator of La Boheme and Tosca, made a trip north to hear what terribly cacophonous thing his German rival had concocted. Gustav Mahler, the director of the Vienna Opera, attended with his wife, the beautiful and controversial Alma. The bold young composer Arnold Schoenberg arrived from Vienna with his brother-in-law Alexander Zemlimsky and no fewer than six of his pupils. One of them, Alban Berg, traveled with an older friend who later recalled the feverish impatience and boundless excitement that all felt as the evening approached. The widow of Johann Strauss II, composer of On the Beautiful Blue Danube, represented old Vienna. Ordinary music enthusiasts filled out the crowd, Young people from Vienna with only the vocal score as hand luggage, Richard Strauss noted. Among them may have been the 17-year-old Adolf Hitler, who had just seen Mahler conduct Richard Wagner's Tristan und Isolde in Vienna. Hitler later told Strauss's son that he had borrowed money from relatives to make the trip. There was even a fictional character present, Adrian Leverkuhn, the hero of Thomas Mann's Dr. Faustus the tale of a composer in league with the devil. The Graz papers brought news from Croatia, where a serbo croat movement was gaining momentum, and from Russia, where the Tsar was locked in conflict with the country's first parliament. Both stories carried tremors of future chaos, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914, the Russian Revolution of 1917. For the moment, though, Europe maintained the facade of civilization. The British war minister, Richard Haldane, was quoted as saying that he loved German literature and enjoyed reciting passages from Goethe's Faust. 